Measures of position for ungrouped data. First, what is measures of position? Measures of position is a technique or techniques that divide a set of data into equal groups. There are three different ways to determine the measures of position. They are the quartile, the decile, and the percentile. Quartile divides a set of data into four equal groups. So just like this figure, so this is how a quartile looks like. So dividing a set of data into four equal groups. So we do have the, the first group, then the second group, the third group, and the fourth group. As you notice, the cut are the one that we call quartile. So the cut here, so we do have here the first cut, known as quartile 1, the second cut, quartile 2, and the third cut up to quartile 3. So even if we do have four equal groups, so the number of cuts needed only is just only three, of course. So we do have only up to quartile 3. And if we never, if, if ever that we're going to compute for quartile's position, so we use the formula quartile class is equal to k over 4 times n plus 1. For the decile, so from the root word deci, so this one divides a set of data into 10 equal groups. So quartile for equal groups, so for decile we do have 10. So through this illustration, so the rate is we are cutting the set of data into 10 equal groups. And again, so just like with quartile, so here our highest decile class is up to decile 9 only. And if we are to compute for such value under decile, so we have the decile class is equal to k over 10, so this time over 10, times n plus 1. And for the percentile, from the root word percent, so this one divides a set of data into 100 equal groups. So I cannot show you any illustration for this one, but if we are to compute for a percentile class, so, it is the percentile class is equal to k over 100 this time, times n plus 1. So, if you notice, we do have quite similar formula. They only differ aside from the initial letter that represents the position. So, we do have 4 for quartile. So, only the denominator is different from this formula. So, number 10 for decile and over 100 for the percentile. So, just keep in mind that this it's just only the denominator that they do differ. So, what does K represent? So, K represents the end class. So, for example, you are dealing with quartile 3, so your K is 3. If you are dealing with decile 7, so your K is 7. While N, usually, so this is normally the one that represents the number of data that we do have. So, for us to understand, let us have a couple of examples. Let us have this one. Find the second quartile, so also known as median, given the scores of 9 students in mathematics activity. So here we do have this data. So whenever that we are computing for such measure position, so it should be a range ascending D. So therefore, you must have first 1 followed by 3, then 7, 7, 16, 21, 27, 30, 31. So once done arranging, we may now start computing for the second quartile. So here, since we are talking about quartile, so therefore, we are going to use the formula under quartile. So we do have Q sub K, or quartile class, is equal to K over 4, since we're talking about quartile, times N plus 1. So quartile 2, so therefore our K now here becomes 2. Our N is the number of data that we do have, since we're talking about 9 students, so our N is 9. Or we may count the number of data that we do have here, so up to 31, so we do have here 31 data. So writing our equation, so we do have quartile 2 is equal to 2 over 4 times 9 plus 1. Simplifying the terms inside the quantity, 9 plus 1 giving us 10. So after doing that, the next thing is we multiply this 10 to 2. So transforming our equation into quartile 2 is equal to 20 over 4. So 20 divided by 4, therefore quartile 2 is equal to 5. Take note that this 5 is not the value of quartile 2. Instead, this tells the position to where we can possibly find the value of quartile 2 or the location of quartile 2. So, quartile 2 is said to be on the fifth position. So, therefore, the number which is on the fifth position is the number 16. So, we may now answer or conclude that the second quartile is on the number 16. Let's have another one. This time, let us find decile 4. So, given with the same set of scores, so this time they are already arranged in proper order ascending D. 
So, decile. So, we're going to use the formula under decile. So, decile class is equal to k over 10 since decile. So, still the same n times n plus 1. So, decile 4. So, our k now here becomes 4. And our n, so remains 9 because we are dealing with the same set of data. So, we do have decile 4 is equal to 4 divided by 10 times 9 plus 1. Again, simplifying the terms inside the quantity, 9 plus 1 giving us 10. And that answer again be multiplied to the numerator. 10 times 4 giving us 40. So, 40 over 10. Dividing properly. So, 40 divided by 10 giving us 4. So, 4 is not the value of decile 4. Instead, it tells us the position as the position of decile 4 which is on the fourth value. And the fourth value on our data is 7. So, therefore, decil 4 is said to be 7. Let's have another one. This time, let us deal with quartile 3. So, also known as the upper quartile. Given with the same set of data. So, since we're talking about quartile again. So, we do have Q sub K is equal to K over 4 times N plus 1. So, transforming our K into 3. Since we're talking about quartile 3 or upper quartile, n remains as 9. Rewriting our equation, so we have quartile 3 is equal to 3 over 4 times 9 plus 1. Again, we simplify the terms inside the quantity. 9 plus 1 is obviously 10. Multiplying this to our numerator, 10 times 3. So the answer is 30. So we have here quartile 3 is equal to 30 over 4. So 30 divided by 4. So, this time we do have a decimal and it is said to be 7.5, meaning that the location of quartile 2 is, is on the 7.5 position. So, meaning it is a value in between of the 7th position and the 8th position. So, see, because it is 7.5. And once this happens, so there are a couple of ways uh, to be done or being used rather whenever that the value or the location is not exact. Other are doing rounding of, other are using a different method such as Mendel and Sinchik. But I do uh, suggest for us to use interpolation in this case because it is more accurate compared to the first two that I stated. So how do we interpolate? So to interpolate, so we just simply use the smaller value between these two involved values. Then we add to the uh, decimal value then multiplied to the difference between the involved values. So meaning... We're going to have quartile 2 will be equal to 27, which is the smaller value between 27 and 30, plus 0.5 coming from the decimal that we do have here. So 0.5, so we do have here 0.5. Then multiplying to the difference of the two involved values, our two involved values are the numbers 27 and 30. So subtracting those two, 30 minus 27, so giving us 3. So we do have here 27 plus 0.5 times 3. So to further simplify, we first multiply 3. 0.5 so giving us 1.5 then the last thing we add this correctly to so 27 plus 1.5 therefore quartile 2 is on the is 28.5 so that is how we interpolate so we are only to interpolate if and only if the given location is not an exact location let's have another one find percentile 46 so again we have the same set of scores scores of 9 students in mathematics activity. So, since this is percentile, so therefore our denominator will be over 100. So, we do have here percentile class is equal to k over 100 times n plus 1. So, our k is 46 because we are looking for the 46 percentile. So, this one becomes 46. Re rewriting our equation, so we do have percentile 46 equals to 46 over 100 times 9 plus 1. So, 9 plus 1, we all have the answer is 10. Multiplying that 10 to our numerator. So, giving us percentile 46 is equal to 460 divided by 100. Then, upon dividing, so this will give us 4.6. So, the location of percentile 46 is on the 4.6 location. So, meaning this is a value in between of the fourth value and the fifth value. So, here's the fourth value and the fifth value because it is 4.6. So, since we don't have an exact location, so therefore, we are to use interpolation again to, get the, to interpolate. 
use a smaller value, then be added to the product of the decimal value and the difference of the involved values. So here, we do have here percentile 46 is equal to 7 because the smaller value between the involved values that we do have is the number 7. Then plus the decimal value that we do have which is 0 0.6 or 0 0.6. Then multiplying to the difference of the two involved values which are the number 16 and 7. So 16 minus 7 giving us 9. And multiplying this 9 to 0 0.6 and that gives us now 7 plus 5.4. Adding this to properly. So therefore percentile 46 is equal to 12.4. Okay. So hope you're starting to get how to interpolate whenever that the value or the location rather that we are looking is not an exact location. Let us have a simple application of this knowledge in a simple situation like this one. So given the scores of 15 students from grade 10 grade, so here are the scores of those 15 students. If the passing is in the 75th percentile of the scores, how many have failed? So for us to do that, since we're going to look for the 75th percentile, for us to determine the number of those people who failed the test, so we need first, of course, don't forget to arrange it ascendingly. So therefore, we do have the proper arrangement of these numbers 10, 11, 13, 13, 13, 14, 15, 15, 16, 17, 18, 20, 21, 21, 22. So don't forget to count again the number of scores that you have rewritten so to make sure that there is no missing values. So let us now start computing. So since we're talking about percentile, we will be having over 100. So percentile class is equal to Ken, K rather, over 100 times n plus 1. So our k now this time becomes 75 since it is the one that we are going to look for for us to answer the problem or what is being asked. So our n this time, so we do have 15 students or 15 scores. So our n now becomes 15. We're writing our equation, so we do have p sub 75 is equal to 75 over 100 times 15 plus 1. So adding these two terms inside the quantity, giving us 16. So we do have 75 over 100 times 16. Of course, we are to multiply 16 to 75. Multiplying it properly. So we do have P75 is equal to 1,200 divided by 100. So proper division. So we do have P75 is equal to 12. So this time we do have an exact location. So meaning, percentile 75 is in the 12 value. And our 12 value is 20. So, P sub 75 is equal to 20. So, if 20, if this is the location to where we do have the passing scores, therefore, how many have failed? So, therefore, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So, we do have 11. So, therefore, there are 11 students who failed the test. Okay? So, this is how we determine the measures of position. So, hope you understand. See you next time. Thank you for watching.